Hey, welcome back everybody to my channel. My name is Brian and I do um, do some YouTube videos on my in, uh, 2019 Infiniti Q50S Signature Edition 3.0T and it is rear wheel drive. So with that mentioned and uh, the modifications are in the opening little credits there. So uh, let's jump into the content. Okay, so today I've wanted to, to deal with this for a while and I've been considering this uh, for a while, but you know, just putting things on the back burner and other things come, you know, priority and whatnot. And, and so this kind of just got put on, on the back burner. But today I just feel motivated to talk about it and I, I got a, an important email and I just want to share that. So what we're talking about today is uh, uh, heat exchangers for this 3.0 T car, which definitely needs mandatory almost that you need a heat exchanger and i'm not going to go into the details of why you need a heat exchanger uh, upgrade there's all kinds of videos on that but let me jump into um, two models that um, i have you know considered and and will consider um, and i just want to inform people too that i uh, when i bought my car and i knew that i was going to get it tuned i i purchased a burger motorsports uh, heat exchanger and um, and there's reasons why and i'll go into that here why i'm not super stoked on the burger motorsports it does work and it, and it seems to work well but there's just some th some quirky things about it that i'm not super super stoked about so in this video i'm going to touch on those uh, and tell you why um, i'm not super keen on the burger motorsports and why i am considering uh, another version here in in the possible future okay okay so the top heat exchanger that everybody likes and everybody recommends but not everybody can afford or does not want to spend the money on is the AMS heat exchanger it's a, it's a nice heat exchanger and it's basically the top mark on the on the line of adding a heat exchanger to your car I mean it's you know it's AMS and they do make quality products and so it is larger than the, the factory unit by quite a bit. And uh, they have the statistics on the AMS website. But also too, you know, for a while there, I was con uh, considering the Mishimoto heat exchanger because I like Mishimoto. I think they make kick-ass high quality products as well. And they did a lot of research to develop their heat exchanger. But you know, all in all, price comes into play. So. Um, and I'm not going to highlight that here. You know, if you want to find more information about the Mishimoto heat exchanger, then you just look that up on the web yourself and do your own homework. So today I'm going to be comparing the PLM uh, heat exchanger, which I've always had an eye on and liked. I just didn't have many facts on it. So um, just to, you know, come up, be up front, I finally got some information from the people there at PLM, uh, you know, Power Motorsports and I actually got a, a size of the heat exchanger. And so um, the PLM uh, right now sells for $4.95 and you can get an additional 5% off on the website. And you might even be able to get 10% off somewhere if you find a coupon or a special. So that's considerably cheaper than the AMS heat exchanger that retails at $800. Well, it's, you know, $799.99. Uh, but uh, and some people you might be able to find it at some dealers, you know, that have an overstock of them or they're just running the sale, maybe $50 off. So they're still going to be $750. Uh, so very, very expensive. OK, so what I have wondered this whole time was, man, they look really like really close in design and to each other. And you know how we all know that a lot of products can be made in the same factory and then different labels or different manufacturer names be stuck on things. Now, I'm not saying that's 100% the case here, but a lot of these things are made over in China and overseas in that area. And they are contracted, you know, specific sizes are, are, are made and then, you know, they're custom made to the manufacturer here in the United States. So, um, like I said, I'm not guaranteeing, but man, in a close inspection, and if I had the exact size of the AMS heat exchanger and we compared them directly to the PLM uh, heat exchanger, you, we might be really, really shocked um, and they might be the same units. 
Now, um, you know, again, I'm not swearing up and down that I know 100% that, you know, uh, the PLM is the uh, exact, made in the exact manufacturing facility, but man, I'm just telling you, they look really, really close. And eight hundred dollars versus four ninety five, and you take five percent off, and what you're maybe like four fifty. Um, they're a huge, huge price difference. They mount the same, and the nipples on the in the intake portion and the exit portion uh, spigots, or whatever you want to call those, are in the same location. It mounts up the same location, and basically, uh, I mean, it looks really, really similar to me. So. Um, I just want to share uh, again why I'm looking at these is as I mounted the Berger Motorsports in my car and uh, and I'm looking to kind of maybe before this next summer uh, upgrade to a better qualified better looking um, you know just I like the factory look and how the factory how it mounts factory and and I just I like factory stuff and how how it's manufactured or, or positioned in the car and so that's why I'm looking at this PLM, giving it a second look. Okay, so uh, the Berger Motorsports uh, heat exchanger that I have, I've got a, cu a couple of qualms or, and issues that I'm not really super stoked about that, okay? And so because I mounted mine in my car, I took my bumper cover off, I did all the labor, I mounted it up, I know exactly how it mounts up rather than pulling it out of a box or taking the box to you know, a shop and saying, here's my you know, $400 or $300, install it. And I'm going to pick it up. I want it to just be done. So I installed mine. So I know, I know the, the issues that I'm not happy about. And I'll just real briefly talk about them right here. And the main reason why I want to uh, maybe take my Burger Motorsports out and install uh, either the PLM or a Mishimoto, but uh, I just wanted to bring this video to people to make people more aware. Okay, so here's what I don't necessarily like about the Berger Motorsports. Uh, first off, it's not mounted in the factory location. Um, I, I just like the, the factory location here. The Berger Motorsports is mounted much lower in the car. Um, also, too, uh, when you mount it, the your hoses are not... Uh, sectioned out right so you've got to remove some of your hoses and cut some of your hoses and uh, and then that just changes up how it's configured also too the uh, the design where the factory heat exchanger where the uh, the hose comes out and runs up the side of the passenger side and goes into the top of the heat exchanger well the the Berger Motorsports um, you uh, take um, the piping in, in our tubing and then you run that into the bottom on the passenger side and then it runs across the heat exchanger and then actually goes has to flow up to the top um, of the heat exchanger where the factory uh, heat exchanger AMS PLM Mishimoto uh, the uh, gravity you know is coming in on the passenger side flows down with gravity and then goes uh, out the other side so it's just kind of a uh, swapped around uh, you know design and like I said I'm just not real keen on that I like the factory obviously the, the people from the factory did that for a specific reason whereas it's kind of just seems like uh, Berger Motorsports picked up a just a random you know uh, a simple unit to put in and they didn't really worry about uh, the details of how it was plumbed so there you go in that specific temperature so say it's 15 to 10 to 15 degrees cooler after it's flowed through the heat exchanger and that sensor is measuring that and that the ECU or PCM is relying on that temperature data to correctly uh, configure everything else. So, you know, adding 10 to 15 degrees in the other direction because of the flow of the coolant and the location of the uh, temperature sensor, you know, it's just some things, you know, it, in my opinion, the Berger Motorsports was just uh, a, a system that they took from China or wherever it's made, and they just put it on the car, and the details weren't real uh, specific, as long as it just, you could stick it on there, and and, and they, they didn't put much thought into it. And so if they would have designed it like the factory unit or the PLM or the AMS, I just think it would have been a much better design and it would have been more like the factory unit. So that's just what I'm getting to. Okay, so with that stated, you know, um, the PLM is quite a bit lesser expensive. And 
I'm almost guaranteeing, I mean, but not, let me change it, not guaranteeing, but it looks almost identical. So saving, you know, um, you know, 400 or, or, you know, $300 on the heat exchanger is, uh, you know, in many people's minds and in their pocketbooks. So uh, I, I really am interested in this BLM unit. So I wanted to bring this video to people because there's no videos uh, about the, this PLM heat exchanger uh, according to the Q60 and the Q50. Uh, as far as I found, no videos and no install and um, you know no data or anything taken from this. So you know maybe here in the future, um, just depending on money and you know work and how things are going, I may you know want to actually jump in and take that uh, mission or the. Uh, uh, Burger Motorsports heat exchanger out and then install either the Mishimoto or this PLM uh, heat exchanger. So I think it'd be really, really cool and it brings people more information and more information we can be more informed. And you know, we might be able to have just as much cooling uh, capacity and cooling efficiency as the $800 AMS, but at a portion of the price. So, you know, I think that's would be a win win for everybody. So, all right, so the piece of information that I wanted to add was I reached out to a PLM manufacturing company about a month ago, and, uh, and I asked them in an email uh, to give me some specific sizes, and it took them a long time to get back to me because um, I didn't want to jump in to buy it and not know the size or the scale of the picture was off. So I finally, um, just today, I got the email back from Kenny here, and he sh showed me or told me this specific size. So. That's interesting to see. So here we go. There, here this information is. I'd like to say, just take a moment to thank you for watching my video. I appreciate you uh, hanging around. Um, like and subscribe if you found my content helpful. Also, too, just want to remind you that I've got about 120 videos up uh, on my channel. So if you have uh, other questions or you want to research other products like brakes and, and catch cans and I mean, I just got tons of stuff on their exhaust, um, you know, uh, yeah, check it out. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, just shoot me a, uh, a post there or ask a question and I'll get to you as soon as I can. So other than that, have a good night, good evening, and I'll catch you on the next, vis next video as usual.